great in our boxing mitt skills and drill series is going to be feeding that right cross. So you're going to see us use the same technique as we did with the lead jab. But once again, it's all of the consistent cueing and setting up a training drill very similar to a previous drill. You want consistency particularly with your new students. So the opposite would happen. Uh, emphasize the importance of mid holders being in a fighting stance that matches their pad holder. When a person gets more advanced, they can change things up, but we want consistency and structure in a class. So she's right-handed, I stay right-handed. I also kind of mimic her stance as much as I can. Um, in other words, I don't open up too wide. I don't overblade. I want to make sure that she really feels she can reach the mid. So that's a really big problem with the cross, is new students, when you hold the mid all the way back here, which is fine, they don't really feel like they can reach it. So they step in and they smother the mid, and they end up jamming. Now, I don't have a problem with an advancing cross that ends up being short, but if we want to build a nice, technical, straight punch or cross jab, we want to feed where it's nice and straight, and they start to also learn how to get that length out of the punch without hyperextending their elbow. So my left hand would be on my chest. My right hand feeds right in front of her face, nose, eyebrows, forehead, and then I would fold it and bring it back. So I'm also building the coordination to meet the punch at the same time as the striker throws. So we would start as a counted drill, and then I would let it roll right into a uh, time interval. So I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The other thing you're gonna find is as people start learning this basic technique, they then are going to save their arms for when it's their turn to be the striker. Um, always remind them, keep that other hand out of the way. We want them to build now when we get to one twos that they're not always going like this. And now everything's different. We want to feed at the next phase that right hand, left cross, all of that into a um, center point that lines up with their face as opposed to on the outside of their body. Okay? Okay, so we're on lesson four now of better ways to introduce mitt work into your classes and teach mitt training to a large group of people at one time. And the easiest way is to come up with a systematic structured training drill. So this is what we're doing is we're progressing on a basic drill. So we're back to our cone now. That other element of mitt work that's challenging for a new person is distance. And creating that compromise, we're basically trying to negotiate in some way, not only how much I'm gonna to connect to her, but how much I'm gonna bring them into her and where it really should be in relation to the striker. This is gonna represent the center line between us. So as she throws that cross, I wanna keep my mitt on my side. If I bring the mitt all the way over to her, I'm actually kind of jamming her punch. Once again, are there short right hands? Absolutely. But if we're trying to build technical and confidence skills in throwing a straight right hand, the visual is really helpful for people. And keep in mind that some people are visual learners. So the 50% that might be visual learners are gonna excel much better with this kind of representation of space than people who are better with the auditory cues and just your explanation. So, I can do it as a counter drill or I can do it as an interval. We're gonna do it as a counter drill just to kind of give you some change up in dynamic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, it wouldn't mean that in a class I still wouldn't emphasize the pivoting, the rotating, the recoiling, the snap, the turnover. Those are consistent cues that you get throughout class forever. But if you notice, what we were able to create is a very concise line of where her reach is supposed to be, within reason. Now, if she stayed there and I got here, she would know I am way too far, and I would know that she me, or she needs me to move in on her. Um, I employ the exact same bit holding skill. If you notice, my left hand stayed down. I fed. I retracted. I fed. By me feeding and then retracting.
impact and I'm also bracing my body for her impact, which is going to also prevent injuries for me in the long run and save my arms when it's my turn to hit. Give that a try.